So there was a certain video game that released recently, one that had a very rocky history behind it and created one of the biggest shit shows for gaming in the last few years. Yeah, we're talking about Harry Potter. So for context, Harry Potter is Harry Potter. You know what this franchise is. It's literally up there with fucking Pokemon in regards to Reach. One of the biggest money makers that exists in media, to put it lightly. What propelled a woman that was quite literally having to live off government benefits into being a multi-fucking millionaire. It is insane to talk about how big Harry Potter has gotten. It's a very successful book franchise, movies, theme parks, tons of video games. It's nuts. Well, the author of the universe is a strange individual, J.K. Rowling. J.K. was an average woman in the UK, though she did struggle with poverty, that ended up kind of just creating all this out of a whim. And thanks to that, she's worth almost a billion euros. Now, Rowling was hailed as a darling by a certain part of the Western political sphere for years, to the point that anytime a retard on Twitter wanted to talk about how much he hated something, he compared it to Voldemort. It even created its own anti-meme with read a different book. But we're not here to talk about Rowling as a person. I have my own feelings about her. Mainly that she was one of those ivory tower fucks that cheered on mass immigration into Europe, even as it caused things like rape gangs and no-go zones to be popped up and then covered up by the police. Yeah, if you want to get depressed, look at how bad the English police worked to cover up immigrant rape gangs, ones that specifically targeted children, purely because they didn't want to be seen as racist. It's enough to churn your guts. But as stated, this video is not about that. Instead, we're going to focus on the newest adaptation to the Harry Potter franchise. For those unaware, Hogwarts Legacy is the action RPG developed by Avalanche Software and published by Warner Bros. The story follows a creative character that enrolls in Hogwarts, who stumbles into a growing conspiracy, set over a hundred years before the actual events of the mainline series. So basic Harry Potter stuff, a prequel that explores how the wizard world was like before Voldemort, you complete quests, befriend different characters, and learn powerful spells that allow you to defeat increasingly dangerous enemies. It sounds like a decent enough game to please both kids and adults alike, right? <laughs> Well, there's a detail that I neglected to mention when I talked about J.K. Rowling. These past few years, she went from the queen of Tumblrites and Twitter weirdos to their version of Lucifer. Yeah, that's not a joke. They hate this lady, even going so far as to show up on her actual property to take pictures, sometimes low-key threatening her while at it too, and something that has infected the Harry Potter franchise to an insane degree. Not only did these people read another book, they actively want to burn Harry Potter off the face of the earth, throwing out all the praise and legacy this franchise had to replace it with bitter contempt. Now, usually this isn't a big problem. I mean, it's a bunch of grown adults in their 30s crying about a fucking book about wizards. And you can hate Harry Potter all you want. You don't have to like it. Hell, I thought it was the dumbest shit on the planet until my sister forced me to watch Goblet of Fire. And there's some who flat out will never get why it got so popular whatsoever. So, you know. The problem is you're not dealing with people who simply scoff and roll their eyes. They don't call you a nerd or laugh at how cheesy the older movies were. Nothing as reasonable as that. No, there is legitimate seething hate in these types, to the point that they don't believe in live and let live. If you don't hate Harry Potter right with them, they don't want you to live, period. Savages, savages, dirty freaking devils. And now we can talk about the problem. So I understand that some people think arguing on the internet is a super serious deal, that you're somehow stopping real world genocides in Ghana or some stupid shit like that, but the Hogwarts Legacy crowd went above and beyond to become downright pathetic. If you play this game, not even buy it, but even pirate it for free and still check it out, they will gun after you like the villagers from RE4. They want to downright unperson anyone who wants to play the game that's tied to a massive franchise. And this isn't a small batch of crazies, not a vocal minority that drowns out more reasonable heads. This is a large organized mob backed by people with substantial followings. So you have a very large group of loud idiots who believe they're morally entitled to fuck up anyone who slights them. And and you have a game that is tied to someone they actually view as the Antichrist made flesh. Yeah, take two guesses what happened. 
yeah, it went to shit fast. Streamers, you know, people who are literally paid to play video games for an audience, were hounded like a pack of starving dogs. You even had a website dedicated to stalking streamers who wanted to play the game. Yeah, literally put them on a list and publicly shamed them. Oh, this crowd swore up and down that it wasn't meant to stalk anyone or direct any heat. It was to know who to boycott. Right. Sure, yeah. Now, who is this crowd, you might ask? Am I gonna keep being opaque for the rest of the video and not name anyone in particular? No, fuck that. It was the trans rights crowd. What have you done? Yeah, the Rainbow Flag Brigade on Twitter freaked the fuck out and accused anyone and everyone who wanted to play Harry Potter of supporting genocide. Yeah, literal genocide. Like Schindler's List, Killing Fields type shit. Guys dragging you out of your home and putting a gun to the back of your head and pulling the trigger. They think that is gonna happen because you played a wizard game aimed towards children. What's the world coming to? Because you played Harry Potter, you're gonna have the Reich rise up and turn San Francisco into Auschwitz. This is the crowd going around and gunning for people. Now, I could be even-handed and say hashtag not all trans or something like that, but I won't, because that would, ironically, kill the nuance of the issue. Everyone gets so bogged down with the group identity politics and trying not to blame and generalize and do all this bullshit that they forget one large part of human nature. People are just fucking crazy. What we're dealing with is not something unique to any one crowd or style of people. Instead, human history has run into this time and time again, and every time it happens, we convince ourselves that this time it's okay, this time our fears are legitimate. It's a mob. The Salem Witch Trials, the Red Scare, D&D causes Satanism, the good old-fashioned moral panic. A moral panic is exactly what it sounds like. The loud chunk of culture picks out a new thing it views as the reason the world is collapsing, this is why our children are dying, the sky is turning red, and there's no big titty vampire GFs for us all to enjoy, they turn something that was once mundane into a portal to hell, and then the loud assholes will fight it tooth and nail trying to destroy it. Sometimes they even succeed, other times they're laughed out of the auditorium, but regardless of the end result, the journey always causes a ton of damage, hurting innocent people and setting disastrous precedent. And don't confuse this for a political statement. It's not. It's a statement on human nature. The animal might have different colored fur, but end of the day, it's a a dumb ape. Same instincts to fight, fuck, and eat. And most importantly, to fit in. To feel included in a pack and know that you are not alone. Because that's what motivated this feedback loop of insanity. The people who went batshit over the Harry Potter game all knew nobody would actually die. They knew that Hogwarts Legacy wasn't going to raise a new generation of children that want to make Man in the High Castle into reality. Instead, they simply peacocked. They repeated the same fear-mongering bullshit over and over again, ensuring the rest of the group knew they were in with them. That trans rights are human rights. No group in existence has ever been as oppressed as trans people. That J.K. Rowling is Hitler incarnate and must be stopped. This melodramatic, exhausted sloganeering that doesn't actually do anything. It doesn't pull the gun out of a murderer's hands or reconnect the artery of someone bleeding to death. It's posting angry words on social media. The problem is that enough of this thrown together creates an outrage mob, each member trying to one-up the other on how dedicated they are to the cause. And it's here that you see who they really are deep down. Personally, I believe that people will flat out tell you who they really are, even liars. You just have to pay attention to what they say and what they do. And the people that banded together to burn Hogwarts Legacy to the ground are awful. They feel entitled to your allyship, that you have to give up something you love to make them happy. Notice how they never refer to you as a friend. It's an ally. No camaraderie or actual relationship, it's just short-sighted union. Glory to the many. <laughs> I am a voice in their choir. <laughs> They can play Overwatch 2 guilt-free despite what Blizzard has done, like straight up driving a woman to suicide, but don't you dare to play the new Harry Potter game. This all sounds like generalization, and it kinda is, but that's what you deal with when talking about a mob and mob mentality. The individual quite literally gives up their individuality in order to fit in with a wave of people. They chant the same slogans, march in the same crowds, and isn't it a tad hypocritical that the same crowd that views anyone who likes Harry Potter as an apostate worthy of death, literally accusing you of being a bigot and a murderer no matter or what? demand not to be generalized and stereotyped as well? Yeah, that's a little hypocritical. So someone who might just want to pick up the game and play it because they loved Harry Potter as a child is simply a bigot. Someone who needs to be re-educated, stalked, had their life ruined, but you can't assume the same about the crowd that silently condones targeting streamers for playing it. Sometimes not even silently. They quite literally give it their blessing. <laughs> People are so silly about that. Oh no, I got harassed for playing the, the, the wizard game. And it's like, yeah, Shut up. <laughs> Suck it up. <laughs>
if you if you honestly are playing that game and didn't expect to get a little flack from it, it means you literally have not been listening to Jewish people. You have not been listening to trans people. You have not been listening to anybody <laughs> about the problems with JK fucking Rowling <laughs> and the goddamn wizarding world of Harry Potter. <laughs> if you honestly thought you could just play that on stream and not have somebody be like, hey, could you not? Could you not? Fuck you! And this is the main thing that infuriates me about this whole issue. The progressive side of the aisle, the crowd that believe in caring and empathy and all that Saturday morning cartoon bullshit they claim to believe in, flipped on a dime to gun after people who wanted to play a Harry Potter game, joining a fiery mob to name and shame anyone they can get their hands on, to the point some streamers had mental breakdowns from the pressure. And these weren't politically active streamers, you know, guys like Matt Walsh or Steven Crowder, people that intentionally insert themselves into heated discussions. No, this was VTubers. This was people who just stream video games for a living and don't talk about politics at all. They gunned after them as though they were responsible for trans people getting killed in fucking Bosnia. It's insane. It's complete schizophrenia. Hell, these same individuals had the gall to accuse them of lying, or worse, even saying it was a necessary evil because trans people have it worse online, ignoring the fact that the recent uptick in trans people these past few years is due to media sensationalism and creating a new fad, which is why a lot of this stuff is aimed at teenagers and children, calling back to that ape want to fit in explanation from earlier. Oh, but saying that, you know, that pisses people off, and we're not allowed to ever judge the fact that civilization has gone through phase after phase after phase, especially in the modern era. No, 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 this is all just people suddenly discovering their new identity, like they did when they were goth. Another victim. Let me be honest, I could not give a single fuck about Hogwarts Legacy. It looked like a mid-wizard game that is hard carried by its IP. I would rather play Morrowind again. It looks more interesting. Come and look upon my heart. Ooh, ooh. But then, pick a me situation happened. And it's giga fucked. Imagine this, guys. One of your favorite VTubers of all time. The one you watched playing Jump King and she was swearing in a funny way. Freaking a long time to come here. And it's right here. I'm fucking done. <laughs> Suddenly, a bunch of fucks harassed her into radio silence for one month because she just announced she's gonna play a harmless game. Because in their heads, they're thinking, if you play this game, you are supporting trans harassment. That is ridiculous, okay? How far would you have to investigate to make sure every single thing in your life does not have any taint of evil, right? If I didn't know any better, I think it's just some sort of weird test for things you hate rather than, you know, applying the same standard vigorously on your whole life. That's my take. Can you imagine the mental gymnastics they have to go through just to use Twitter? I think most of these people actually hate Elon Musk. Why are you here? Aren't you supporting Elon Musk? The argument is stupid, is what I'm trying to say. Pikami had a lot of harassment in her original tweet. Unfortunately, in my research on this, I could not see any quote retweets directly because she deleted her original announcement because I would imagine the quote retweets on that would have been fucking disgusting. One of the tweets remaining online still referencing the original tweet of Pikami is rude, mean. I kind of respect that it's still up because most of the tweets were actually privated. So I can respect him being an asshole. He is still an asshole. Unlike these fucks that are like passive aggressive. Oh, well, maybe you shouldn't play the wizard game. Uh. So you know what, guys? You know what I did? I actually bought Hogwarts Legacy. And this is my plug for this video, Loli. <laughs> I'm just gonna fucking say I'm gonna review this. It's gonna come out in April. <laughs> Thanks for having me. I hate the people that bullied her. I wish Pika me well. All right. So, this is the wake-up call you people need to hear. You are all horrendous human beings pretending to be good people, engaging in performative morality in order to hide how empty and ugly you are deep down, insisting that you mean well and care about others, meanwhile your boot is nice and tight over somebody's windpipe. The crowd that bullied Silvervale and Pikami, completely apolitical VTubers that had nothing to do with the larger culture war, whatever gay shit you want to call it, don't care about saving anybody. They did it because they get off on hurting others, and having some weird moral superiority they can weaponize to hurt others, which is a major issue that's gone unaddressed for years, that some people might just use social issues and causes as a cover for doing extremely fucked up things.
things. Idiots nowadays will rush to the defense of any scam artist that has a convincing enough sob story, even if the truth is staring them in the face. And I do want to call out some people in particular for being absolute scumbags during this entire situation, but please understand this. These guys are not the only people involved. These are a handful of examples that I just stumbled into. For the love of God, don't assume these are the only guys that did this. It was so much larger. When you actually start to look, you will understand what I mean by this was not a vocal minority. This was a very large wave that tried to crash into people with zero regard for what happened. The first one being Jim Sterling. Yeah, the guy who constantly whines about gamers with a capital G harassing him for wearing a wig. Meanwhile, he insists the people who got harassed thanks to Hogwarts simply got mild pushback. The offense comes purely from the self-described allies who want to have it both ways, who want to play their wizard game and get really upset when criticised over it. Or the media outlets who justify their uncritical reviews by having the fucking nerve to compare our protests against them to fucking Gamergate. Transphobes, you need to up your game because none of you will ever be as insulting as a self-styled cis ally who wants trans people's permission to not take a stand. Cis feelings aren't our responsibility. It's so telling that the only real coverage of alleged harassment in games media this week has been about cis streamers getting upset at some mild pushback. It's a really old play. Whenever trans people advocate for themselves, we're painted as unreasonable bullies. Unsurprisingly, I've been asked to answer for the alleged harassment because minorities are always expected to take responsibility for each other. <laughs> and harassment, and doxing, and people doxing my friends, and like, <laughs> so much horrible, vile things, all from streaming a fucking video game. <laughs> it's just insane. Like... <laughs> Hey, it breeds hate and it doesn't help anyone. <laughs> and I don't know, I, I got to the point where I was, I was sick of seeing hatred all over and guilt tripping on random art tweets. It's literally like, they gang up on so many random tweets about Valentine's Day or art or automated posts. Like they, they wanna, post so much negativity everywhere and I just got sick of it so I block people because I just wanted breathing room flip up and now it's like whatever I'm almost like thinking of just like either going offline or like we're I'm barely into the second combat here and every time I look at chat it's just the conversation is just like maybe we can do like bothering a beer, a beer me right back. Like, a, like, a, like a little break or something you can take a break if you want I'll just stop talking and I'll just go fight and do the combat this is just mild pushback to Jim, apparently, but you know. You can't keep doing this! You can't keep doing shitty things and then feel bad about yourself like that makes it okay! Plague Moth makes money literally watching gore videos with real death and listens to black metal, a genre of metal notorious for being extremely offensive and off-putting on purpose, yet wants to play the guilt by association game. So does playing this game make you transphobic? Does buying this game make you transphobic? No. Is it a transphobic act? Yes. And the reason is, is because, yes, you are technically putting money in the pockets of an aggressively transphobic and anti-Semitic and border, well, overall racist woman. Especially to content creators, the peers, so to speak, that I have and people above me and so to speak. Everybody is playing this game and then they're making a little video essay to milk their views in on it talking about how it's okay that they do it because X, Y, and Z, but really, you're not listening to the marginalized crowd that's telling you why this is problematic. You're not listening to your own audiences, and that's where my criticisms really lie. It's with my peers. You are all the things that are wrong with you. Yeah. This guy wants to play the morality police. He also had Haman Beat, a JoJo YouTuber who laughed at the video of Silvervale having a mental breakdown, then went on to accuse her of lying about being doxxed and having threats sent to her and her mom. Which, you know, you have zero proof of that. King K repeated the we're holding people accountable spiel, flagrantly disregarding that threats and open calls for raiding streamers have all been documented and archived. These are just a few, and trust me, they are not alone. I have to seriously beat you guys over the head. There were tons of people that engaged in this crap and gave it their blessing. These are just the examples I personally ran into and responded, which is the biggest issue at the end of the day. This was not an isolated incident, a small group of crazies that went too far. This was a mob that was supported and defended by people with substantial followings, which caused them to double down and cause even more havoc. You don't get a shit show this large just because a group of 20 people 
people in a secret Discord server decide to fuck with everyone. This is something that requires ego, and it requires numbers. This shit didn't blow up the way it does because suddenly they went insane. This was the result to years of buildup, to people convincing themselves that looking like a good person mattered more than actually being one. This crowd legitimately believes that because J.K. Rowling was tied to a video game, even though she wasn't, the devs outright said she was not involved, because she was tied, they could accuse it of being racist, anti-Semitic, evil, they could gun after anyone they wanted. Hell, they're still demanding people not buy the game to this very day, a full month after it came out. They're literally going, all you had to do was not buy the game, acting like fucking spoiled children when people made it very, very clear that it is not appreciated. They literally wanted to make a website that stalked people for streaming the game, and they have the gall to whine about how the world is now scary because people got pissed off at them. And they're trying every excuse under the fucking sun to make it go away. Oh, these people were not actually harassed, it was all a marketing scheme. Peek me was secretly planning on graduating months beforehand, and no, I'm not gonna tell you how I know that. She always intended to quit. They're also saying stuff like, oh, secret right-wingers were posing as trans accounts to go after people, and that's where all the harassment came from. Another group is saying that there was no harassment whatsoever, and everyone's just lying. Nobody can get your fucking story straight here. But I am good at first impressions, and you are a fucking cunt. And I doubt you fought many men. In fact, let's talk about the Pikmi situation real quick. So for those unaware, Pikmi was a pretty famous VTuber that was tied to a company called Voms. Well, to call it a company is kind of an exaggeration. It's a one-man show. He does the art for all the talents, and they basically just have a deal where they split the merchandise profits. Well, Pikami is actually Japanese. At least, she's half Japanese and lives in Japan. She was actually really excited to play Hogwarts Legacy because Harry Potter is a pretty big thing over in Japan, and she grew up with it. Well, turns out when she announced that she was going to play it on February 7th, it did not end well. People hounded her and probably more than likely did exactly what they did with Silvervale, accusing her of being a bigot, saying she was a horrible person. Rumor has it there were also death threats and doxing involved, but no one knows for sure, and basically ran her out. Literally, she canceled the stream and went dead silent for a month straight. Now, she came back recently, but then announced that she's going to leave at the end of March. She is done with VTubing and more than likely just going to close up shop. This pissed her fans off relentlessly. Because, as stated, Pikami is not a political person. She's not someone who is a provocateur or constantly gets into internet fights. She's a very wholesome character, and the entire idea is she's just cute anime girl playing video game. And then out of nowhere, she's hounded by this psychotic mob that we've discussed earlier, to the point that she cancels everything and announces she's gonna leave. Now, I will talk about that theory that people are having, and I am very much labeling it a theory because it makes no fucking sense when you think about it. But the point is, this caused a major shift. The Silvervale situation was already pretty bad. This one made it explode several leagues worse. And frankly, this is kind of when everything went from pretty shit to outright hell on earth. Everyone pretty much went full Super Saiyan and decided to make Twitter look like Pole for a little bit, announcing full TTD and gunning after anyone they saw as involved. Now, it definitely had issues in that everyone started talking like anime villains and getting really melodramatic when the situation pretty much just amounts to don't be a massive dick and bully people, but, you know, it is what it is. People are dumb when they get emotional. And this was a case of one of the bigger VTubers out there decided to close up shop purely because people hounded her that bad. And of course, the usual suspects deny all responsibility. They had nothing to do with it, it never happened, all we did was express disappointment. The usual excuses these people made when people actually called them out on their shit. You know, the whole don't bully people and stalk them and accuse them of murder for wanting to play a fucking video game. But what makes it even more egregious with the Pikmi situation is she never played it. No, she never once played it. She announced the stream on the 7th before the game came out and canceled it before the game ever released. She didn't even touch it. And to make matters all the more worse, she had just got done from a hiatus because she had to take care of family members that were sick and she herself had to deal with medical emergencies. This was supposed to be her comeback stream, which is where we dip into that theory I talked about being complete horseshit and cope. Alright, so a lot of people were speculating back and forth whether or not Pikmi actually was harassed off the internet, or if she was always planning on graduating and this was just weirdly coincidental timing. I fully believe in the former, and if you believe in the latter, you are going out of your way to ignore major context clues. Now yes, Voms came out and said that Pikmi was always going to graduate, and this was all part of the plan. Hell, there's even a video going around of Pomu, who's an affiliate along with that group, saying that Pikmi talked to her in private, saying that she was going to leave. I guess, I guess, um, to say anything. 
I did know in advance about this. But, um... Because she did message me um, a while ago before she went on her break. And she said, she was like, I wanted to tell you beforehand. Here's the thing though, it's wildly taken out of context and that statement from Voms is more than likely just to get rid of the controversy, because there's major details people are ignoring for the sake of not wanting to admit they fucked up royally. For one, the video with Pamu where she's talking about how Pikami supposedly came to her in private before the break and was announcing her graduation, she never actually clarified what break that was. She never mentioned if it was before she had to go take care of her family or after she went radio silent on the internet was only, I only know what I was told by her. She did not tell me too much. She messaged me at the end of January that, you know, she was deciding this. And I asked her a few questions afterwards and we talked a little bit and that was it. And I don't really think it's my place to pry into her reasoning or her privacy or anything like that. Um, but I do stand by what I say because I felt like I felt like I saw not just some of my what I said being taken out of context but also I feel like I saw some people putting words into my mouth or maybe interpreting what I said incorrectly and um, that's my fault for not being mm, more clear but um but uh you know, I don't know. You know, I don't know. I don't know. Okay, so... <laughs> I literally said the last time everything that I know. This is on top of the fact that the actual announcement from Voms itself, talking about Pikami leaving, words it to be a lot more of a surprise and sudden change of events. If this was always the case, why would they have to suddenly shift up details for an event and include Pikami for something that, frankly, didn't sound like include her to begin with. Hell, there was already an event in March that she was going to be involved in. Her third year anniversary with the group. So, you know, just saying. Another detail to bring up is the fact that supposedly she ordered a new rig, you know, to get ready and show off new stuff for her character. If she was always going to leave in March, why would she go and order stuff for the character she's not going to be able to use again? That doesn't make any sense. On top of that, she'd be starting Hogwarts Legacy on February 7th when the game came out, meaning she would have maybe a month and a half to play through a game that's a pretty decent sized RPG. It's not the longest, but it is 60, 70 hours if you want to go through everything. Tenma's playthrough is getting about that large. So if she wanted to start that RPG, it would basically have to be the only thing she would play in order to finish it, because why would she leave a game half finished if she's going to leave and she knows she's leaving? That doesn't make any sense. Hell, there's rumors that she was even talking about different games she wanted to play on stream this this year and collaborations with other people. This very obviously was not something she was considering for a while, at least not seriously. She might have been floating the idea in her head, and the situation is what put the nail in the coffin. But if you listen to anyone else talk about it, they swear up and down that none of this had anything to do with Pikami leaving, it's completely unrelated, she simply went quiet for a little while and decided to leave of her own volition. Which is bullshit, it's outright victim blaming. Of course Voms isn't going to directly say that what happened to Pikami is exactly why she's grabbed graduating. They can't say that. A, it would embolden the people that went after her to go after other people because it proves it works. B, the other talents would be in danger because now that entire company has a target on its back. And C, why would they want to look like a group that can't protect its own talents? That's a horrible, horrible PR disaster. It's already pretty bad. It really does feel like people just don't understand that of course a company or a group or what have you would try to downplay a controversy to make it go away. Another point to bring up is actually some other statements made by other VTubers that Pikami was friends with, such as Kason and Shy Lily. They both made statements about the situation and, and they sound a lot more bitter, making some pretty blatant references to the controversy that happened and how Pikami was treated. <laughs> あの、
まあ騒ぎたい人にとっては関係ないそうですねうんなんだけども悪質なのが何か理解理解できる攻撃対象にしかしない、うん、そうですね思いますねそう人種も国籍も性別も、えー、考え方も思想も、えー、宗教も、えー、何にも関係ないそれがビートーバーの世界、えー、だということを今一度皆さんに分かっていただきたい。Uh, I don't want it to leave! I didn't do nearly enough of her yet! She can't just leave like that! Did she spend nothing but a f e w beacon? And for Twitter and n e w s to get rid of her like that is fucked up! What happened to Pikami? Twitter frogs. She announced that she wanted. Intended to play the wizard game. And obviously, because she is now f e e d e g e n that spends all that time breathing and living Twitter, she had no idea that some person that's somehow connected to things has some shit opinions about some great people. And they were tearing her apart for simply announcing that she wants to play a wizard game. Pikami also directly liked tweets that referenced the bullying and called it out and said it was shitty. So, if the girl herself is doing that, that's pretty much proof that it was a factor. Another thing I do want to point out is that everyone now is trying to accuse Pikami of being a pedophile, since apparently she was a lolicon. I'm not gonna make any statements about this purely because nobody bringing it up actually has good intentions with it. If they actually cared about Pikami being a lolicon, they would have brought that up a lot earlier, and that would have been the reason they gunned after her, not playing a Harry Potter game. I'm sorry, but this feels like people are retroactively coming up with a reason to cancel somebody and then justify it to themselves. No, they know they fucked up and went after somebody and ruined their life because they wanted to play a video game. So they're doing everything they can to turn the situation to something it's not, saying that Pikmi was always leaving, that none of the people arguing in her name actually cared about her, people are just using her as a martyr to be transphobes, all this stupid inane bullshit that proves that. People legit just want to be high school bullies, and they'll find anyone they can to do that to. Hell, the reason they didn't go after somebody like Hololive is because that's a company with lawyers. Meaning, you'll be fucked up the ass if you even think about it. So they gun after the weakest targets, and sadly, that was Pikami. Hell, they also tried it with Silvervale, and at least she stood up. Hell, to make it even worse, they're going after Pipkin Pippa for playing the game explicitly as a spite to the people that went after Pikami, and saying fuck you to them, completely disregarding the fact that they're the ones that turned it into a political statement. So when they try to retort with shit like, I can't believe you spent $60 on a game you hate just to mess with people, they don't get the irony that they're the ones that called it a genocide simulator. You don't get to cry and piss your pants like a lunatic and then claim everyone else is overreacting. Sorry, but fuck you. You said I'm bringing heat on you? I gotta listen to people because of your fucking shit? You're ordering me out? You better get your own fucking army, pal! Hell, another thing to point out is when Silvervale actually called out these people for trying to ruin her life, to which they still accuse her of being a liar and have tried to push the story that she faked all of this for some reason. When she actually called these people out, she specifically made a point of saying, Twitter freaks are not people, LGBT people are awesome. We are going to play a game, and I will preface this that I do not condone、uh, the ideals of this author. I just want to be a fucking wizard, and I want to play my wizard game that made my childhood worth living. And the adventures that I went on with my friends. And I'm gonna be a fucking wizard. And we're gonna enjoy this fucking game. And I will not be bullied by a bunch of Twitter freaks best, with nothing、right、better、chat. to do with their goddamn lives. Be nice to people. If you wanna make changes, go make actual changes instead of harassing streamers on the internet. LGBT people are awesome. Twitter people are not awesome. Fuck you. As you can clearly see, she's referencing the people that tried to ruin her life and bully her off the internet. It's very explicit, everyone knows who she's talking about. Yet, this exact crowd, the one that's been going around shitting their pants like a wild fucking cult, decided that's a dog whistle. No. When she says Twitter freaks, the people that tried to dox her, her friends, ruin her life, destroy her career, all that, she secretly means trans people. She secretly means Jewish people. It's all a ploy to appeal to the 4chan neckbeards. 
Has it gotten through your heads yet that these people are addicted to the internet and they're fucking paranoid and psychotic? I mean, this is quite literally a cult accusing everyone that they don't like of being a heretic logic. She specifically said the people that tried to hurt her are bad, and these assholes took personal offense to it. Kind of telling on themselves. I really feel like I can't emphasize that enough. Literally, in the middle of a controversy where these psychos are accused of mass harassing anyone they don't like, as soon as they got done messing with a pretty popular streamer and pissed off all her fans, first thing they did was find another one. Now granted, yes, Pippa was being a provocateur. She did intentionally try to goad them. But literally all she did was say fuck you and want to play the Harry Potter game. Nothing beyond that. She didn't say any slurs. She didn't say 41%. She didn't say TTD. She wasn't being edgy. She literally just announced a Harry Potter stream and saying a fuck you to people. That's it. And yet, her replies are filled with people calling her a Nazi, a bigot, the exact same script they used on everyone else, proving that they have no idea what the fuck they're talking about. They truly feel playing this video game, a video game based on a children's book series, is proof that you are a violent bigot that wants to genocide people. It's insane. How the hell is anyone supposed to take this seriously? And hell, they're using it as proof, literal proof, mind you, that this was all some right-wing psyop to boost a bunch of VTubers? Right, yeah, because a bunch of apolitical streamers who don't care about this and make their money off just being kawaii anime girls suddenly wanted to team up with Paul to do a right-wing psyop against trans people. That doesn't make any sense. And even if their end goal was to somehow stoke controversy by announcing they want to play Harry Potter, why the hell did you fall for it? If they had this plan to stoke a bunch of outrage, why did you play along with it? Why were you goading it on? Why were you accepting it was happening? Why did it take people literally posting burning trans flags for you to speak up and say, maybe this went a little too far? No, everyone knows what actually happened. They thought they were gonna win. They assumed that everyone would just silently accept that Harry Potter was an evil franchise, nobody would buy the game, no one would stream the game, everyone would avoid talking about it and act like it didn't exist. They wanted to bully everyone into being quiet, not understanding that that is such a delusional way of looking at things. Of course that wasn't gonna fucking work. You're talking about millions of people here. Millions of people that don't know you might like people you went after a hell of a lot more, and at the end of the day, there's always gonna be that guy that says fuck you just for the sake of it. So, I don't, I, I don't, I genuinely don't know what the plan was. I gen, I'm speechless. What was the plan? Did you actually think you could just get people to not talk about Harry Potter? The funniest part is, once again, I'll bring it up to the big account people. You know, the ones with big followings. You had people like Shenpai, who is a pretty major Final Fantasy XIV streamer, deny all the harassment ever happened and claim everyone's just bigots, cis people are horrible manipulators, and like the day after, her Discord leaks out and turns out, yeah, they're all engaging in anti-Semitic jokes and racial jokes, all those edgy jokes they swear up and down they despise, and they're doing it, because of course they are, because virtue signaling is fraudulent bullshit. Behind closed doors, no one fucking cares. This is all public persona crap. The insulting part is you would have us believe your character, the one that's the stalwart paladin that cares about all these issues, you'd have us believe that's really you, when it's not. You're just a human being. And now you look so hilariously worse because you tried to gun after somebody that literally didn't do anything, she wanted to play a Harry Potter game, and you yourself have some pretty major skeletons. I'm just saying. You also had Hassan Piker retweet the Twitch partner that was accusing Pippa of running some neo-Nazi gang and this was all a right-wing psyop. Yeah, the one who made that specific claim was retweeted by Hassan, essentially throwing his hat into the ring without officially saying it. Because when this all kicked off, Hassan was one of those that claimed this was an outrage mob that was insane which that was one of his only chances to actually win any brownie points with reasonable people. This game already was number one on pre-orders. You're, you're giving the boycott, quote-unquote boycott, more power than it actually has. It's powerless, which was my ultimate point to begin with, okay? People were going to buy it anyway. People bought it already before this boycott became a thing. Half this discourse is happening on another transphobic billionaire's website, okay? People go to Universal Studios and no one is fucking boycotting that shit. Hogwarts is inside of Universal Studios. I went there. Nobody fucking freaked out. It's just a thing because people decided to make this a thing. And my goal always is don't make this a thing. Use this as a positive. Use this as a moment for momentum. It hasn't even been released yet. I think it's time to admit that the Hogwarts Legacy boycott was a complete fucking failure and a missed opportunity, says Hassan Abbey Productions. 
Hogwarts Legacy streamer brought the tears after Twitch chat harassment. You're the villain here. Web developer creates site the track streamers who play Hogwarts Legacy. Hogwarts Legacy reaches record-breaking number of Twitch uh, watchers. And he immediately pissed on it because he's a coward. He won't fight Sam Hyde, but he sure will go after a pink anime rabbit. Son Piker, I'm coming to kill you in Los Angeles at your house. It really does seem like this crowd has the pattern recognition skills of prepubescent children because they can't seem to understand that the louder they scream, the more they try to gun after everyone and accuse them of being horrible people. Yeah, of course they're gonna try to find a way to piss you off because fuck you. Especially with the fact that this crowd was the one that really tried to push and normalize the guilt by association mindset. If you had a fascist sitting at a table next to you and you didn't denounce them, that proved you were secretly fascist. This is crap they wanted to push. They were the ones that pushed the idea of dog whistles, of saying something to a crowd without actually saying it, and basically giving them free reign to interpret what you say whatever they want, which was really, really handy when they had to accuse Silvervale of talking about Jews and trans people when she specifically pointed out the ones that threatened to kill her and her mom were fucking crazy. No, it obviously had to be about all Jews and trans people. You motherfucker, you! Kind of, you know making them look substantially worse in the process, but you know, as so long as they could appeal to their dumbass followers. So I repeat, the people that pushed for this culture, this idea, and basically this philosophy to be normal, now they're crying they're being generalized? Yeah, no shit it was a bad idea, what the hell did you think was gonna happen? No, I'm being serious, what did you think was gonna happen? Did you seriously believe everyone would just shut up and do what you said? No. There's always gonna be that guy that says, fuck you. Hell, it's to the point that you have articles coming out downplaying the fucking mob that happened. Trying to say it never existed, there's no proof of harassment, I mean, it's like, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? The same crowd that thinks someone pointing out, hey, you're kind of a piece of shit if you lie about a game in your article is actual harassment? Now they're saying there's no proof of any of that anywhere? Despite the multiple Google Docs that show this was a real thing that happened, the videos of people breaking down in tears, very obviously affected by what happened, like, are you fucking joking? I wouldn't trust these people to tell me the fucking sky is blue, I'd have to take a look out the window to make sure it's not purple. Another thing I'll bring up is, uh, Vosh decided to get on, on the issue, talking about how Pipkin Pippa is secretly a Nazi, and Pikami is totally a pedophile, because Pikami liked lolly art of her character. Large portion of VTubers are degenerate 4chan incel pedophiles. Um, some of the largest, I guess, like capitalization that I've seen on um, uh, on on the drama surrounding Pikami's departure has come from someone called uh, uh, um, Pippa, who I think is like a Nazi. I saw a couple of clips of this person. I assume they're attention baiting, so don't want to give them too much of that. But like, b like basically, there there was there was a clip of like somebody said New World Order. And a bunch of people in her chat were screaming like oy vey, oy vey. It's all like Nazi shit. It's like um like JQ, like like you know, the whole thing. Um their colors are the trans colors. Well, you know, Nazis love to appropriate art. The VTuber community in general has had serious issues with its its clientele. I don't think that's going to change either. Vosh has an alternative Twitter account where he follows erotic lolly accounts. Think that's bad? Roll the clips. Okay, so if you were to, so, you know, there's pedophiles, right, who buy child pornography. Mm -hmm. Would you say they should not be held responsible for doing that? Yes. Really? Even though mm -hmm. they're directly supporting child rape? Yeah, I think that's, it's, uh, it's hypocritical. If, if I, because I, I bought my computer and the silicon in it was farmed in Africa by slaves. If I can do that and that's legal that's... and no one's going to call me out in my shit, then yeah. I have to be consistent in that respect. Okay, look, um, I, I think there's levels to this. So I wouldn't equate buying a computer to buying child pornography. Yeah, talk shit, get hit, motherfucker. And frankly, this is something I do feel needs to be talked about. Remember that Jim Sterling clip I played earlier? Notice the verbiage he used. Us. We. The community. Trans people as a whole. Hell, the clip before that, the vampire uh, VTuber, that one? Yeah, look at the way they talk too. It means you literally have not been listening to Jewish people, you have not been listening to trans people, you have not been listening to anybody. You didn't talk to any trans people or Jewish people. Not, you didn't talk to the offended groups in particular, you didn't talk to any of them in general. So, trans people in general didn't like Harry Potter. Jewish people in general 
didn't like Harry Potter. They're clearly talking as if it is a group, it is a hive mind, it is a collective with an agenda. Yet when people called them on it and said, what's well, pretty fucked up that trans people would do this, suddenly it turned into, well why are you judging a whole based on the actions of the individual? Cis feelings aren't our responsibility. Unsurprisingly, I've been asked to answer for the alleged harassment because minorities are always expected to take responsibility for each other. Tower responsibility. So suddenly, now it's the actions of the individual. When it's time to gun after somebody like a horde of ravenous zombies, it's a community, it's a group. They can exclude who they want, they can banish people, they can punish outsiders, they can gun after anyone that they view as antithetical to the values they hold. But when called out on it, they drop all that. Suddenly it turns into, well I didn't do that, well I didn't do that. Well then, why did you give up your individuality? Why did you put yourself in the same shoes as the group? Hell, that's where you get the whole, there was never any harassment, it was just people expressing criticism. Because they can't admit that they were bad actors, they can't admit that some people were just crazy. They went so far as to say it was undercover trolls going so far to stoke the flames of this all. Even though I've already shown you, that's not the case. They very much believe they were justified and in the right. So, once again, there's a major contradiction here we're all just supposed to ignore. Now, I'm not saying every single trans person is guilty here, because individuals never apply to statistics. What I am saying is that the community at large is guilty of it, because they themselves signed off on it, they bragged about it, and even ran fucking victory laps over it. They're clearly not guilty about what happened. So, sorry, but yeah, the group here needs to be called out for it. Now, here's a subject I actually do want to talk to you guys about, even if it's a little bit of a tangent and we're going to get a little bit off topic. So, the entire reason this whole shit show kicked off is because these people feel as if buying the game gives JK Rowling money. Obviously, you think she'd receive royalties because she created the fucking world to begin with. But a point a lot of people like to bring up is that the people that are railing so hard on Hogwarts Legacy and saying if you buy the game, you support transphobia and everything JK Rowling puts on her Twitter bio, everyone points out that why this game? Why is this bad, yet nothing else is seemingly this dire? Blizzard, as I mentioned earlier, was caught in a scandal where they quite literally harassed somebody to death, sexually assaulted women, stole their breast milk. I mean, it's something that's over-the-top evil. Sony had one of their executives get caught in a fucking pedophile sting, and people are still buying Sony products. Activision does whatever it can to essentially nickel and dime children, shoving in microtransactions to the point that it got so bad you had government stepping in and declaring games casinos. EA was a major contributor along with them, and EA already has its own fucked up history. Hell, Dead Space Remake just came out. In IP, EA murdered, and then essentially stole from Visceral, after they murdered Visceral as well, yet received critical acclaim and great sales, even though everyone knows the story of what happened to Visceral and how EA fucked them. Bethesda released Fallout 76, which was so broken and unplayable it doxed people trying to put in bug reports, yet people still played that and gave it money, even as they emphasized a cash shop above basic fucking features. In fact, let's move out of games. Did anyone see the Freddie Mercury movie, Bohemian Rhapsody? Yeah, that one. The one that was nominated for an Academy Award? That was made by a pedophile. Do you have the slightest idea how little that narrows it down? Brian Singer has been accused multiple, multiple times of going to parties with underage boys. Something that he almost brags about. Well, alright, you don't have to watch that. Let's just watch The King's Speech instead. That's a fantastic movie. But it was released by the Weinstein Company. Owned by Harvey Weinstein. The guy that was caught manipulating women for sex. Essentially the father of the Me Too movement. Well, alright, that's pretty bad. Well, let's go ahead and sit down and watch some iCarly. You know, some good old classic Nickelodeon. All right, Dan Schneider. Well, you know what? We don't have to watch any of this stuff. Let's go ahead and sit down and watch Jeepers Creepers by the great Victor Salva. You know, fantastic horror director. He made Jeepers Creepers. And he also made that movie Clown House, which I heard had a very interesting story behind. Holy fucking shit. Yeah, this guy uh, rapes the lead actor of Clown House and made child porn tapes of him. He even outright went to prison for it. And when he got out, that's when he started doing the Jeepers Creepers franchise, with Jeepers Creepers 3 including a child molestation subplot that's turned into a joke. I'm not kidding. You know what, fuck this sleazebag, let's not do that. Let's watch Chinatown by the great Roman Polanski. Oh right, yeah, Roman Polanski. Fuck. So we can't do that either. We well, you know what, we're not gonna do any movies. Instead, we're gonna sit down and drink a Coke.
Shit. You guys get what I mean now? Yeah, every single thing you touch or enjoy is in some way tied to a sleaze bag, because that's just the nature of the beast. Now, of course, you don't cancel every single thing you purchase or watch, because at that point, you're fighting against the tide with a broom. You can absolutely choose to avoid all these things, because yeah, they have some fucked up histories behind them, but this level of insane mob tactics seem to be completely reserved for Hogwarts Legacy. Nobody's canceling any of the movies I just talked about, nobody even seems to want to bring them up entirely. If someone does bring up the fact of, hey, why are you working with Blizzard after it was proven they did something extraordinarily fucked up? Hell, I didn't even bring up Ubisoft, which had meetings at strip clubs and sexually harassed female employees. Well, the excuse you'll usually hear is, there's no ethical consumption under capitalism. Yeah, they bring it to be about fucking capitalism for some reason, instead of just having principles. As if you don't have a choice and have to give these people your money, or else you'll be left behind in the zeitgeist, or it's something you simply can't live without. Here's the thing, somebody that knows about Blizzard's history and still chooses to buy their products, and they're open about it, I respect that hell of a lot more. They're not pretending to be the good guy. At least they acknowledge, this is a fucked up company, but I've been a fan of these series for years, what the hell am I supposed to do? I don't agree with the mindset, but at least they're not acting like fucking Jesus. That's the infuriating part about this mob. They all have such an inflated sense of moral superiority when they're just like any other dumbass consumer, giving money away to corporations that fucking hate them, yet somehow acting as if they're better than everyone else. Hell, remember when Disney literally filmed the live-action version of Mulan next to literal death camps in China, and nobody made a fuss about it? I mean, they just got away with that? In fact, people cheered it on and said people who didn't like the movie were just racist and sexist? I'm sorry, but this is why I hate you people, because you seem to not understand what a real human rights abuse looks like, just so you can peacock to your friends on Twitter. I know some people will try to shoot back with, oh, you don't like society, yet you participated, but here's the thing. You didn't do anything. You didn't actually avoid anything. You still give money to Coke, you still want to go see Bohemian Rhapsody, you still give money to Disney. You're not an activist, you're not doing anything. All you're doing is screaming at people on Twitter who also can't do anything. Hell, the entire reason they started gunning after the streamers is because they tried to actually get this game pulled off Steam and it fell the fuck apart. Because when you deal with contracts that are in the millions of dollars with massive entertainment companies, they don't give two fists of a fuck about your Twitter protests. They don't care. All this money's already been spent making the damn game, they're gonna release it. So the next best thing these assholes had was just to punish anyone that wanted to play it. Which, at that point, just proves you have a tiny penis and you don't actually care about any ethical or moralistic fight. You just want to feel like you can do something when you can't. And all you accomplished was pissing everyone off and making this corporate product look like the epitome of punk. Because it's the only way to tell you to fuck off. Which is something they don't seem to understand. No, dropping $60 on a corporate video game is not going to save the West. But at the same time, at least it pisses off this annoying asshole on Twitter that accuses everybody of being a bigot just for wanting to play it. Zero comprehension to the fact this all exploded into as big a shit show as it did because of you. Because you freaked out about a video game that, under any other context, would have been forgotten. Sure, it might have been considered pretty good among Harry Potter fans, but it wouldn't be highest selling game of the year so far, purely out of spite. And at that point, you seriously have to ask what you did wrong. Because if your only answer to this is, wow, I can't believe people are so desperate to trigger the libs that they'll drop 60 bucks on a video game, the only thing I'll retort with is, hey, at least they didn't try to blame a real-life murder on a Harry Potter game. Why are you supporting hatred with the LGBTQIA plus community? How did we get here so fast? The game's the gun. And you're the bullet. The bullet's the game. And you're, the bullet's in the gun. The, you're the gun and the, the bullet is the game. Sorry, you're, yeah, so you're the gun and the bullet is the game and you're, ca you're causing a murder. I feel like this really does need to be hammered into the ground. They try to blame actual real life death on Harry Potter. One, a kid who got stabbed to death in a park, which by all accounts has nothing to do with it. It was just a random native English stabbing. And the other was they literally invented a transgender VTuber to commit suicide. They made up a story that a transgender VTuber committed suicide due to bullying brought on by Hogwarts. And then not even 24 hours later, yeah, it came out that was fake. It's like, are you fucking kidding me? How can anyone say anyone else is taking this too seriously when you resort to blaming a real murder on a video game? 
You don't get to go, you guys care too much, and this is all just anime waifus when you blamed an actual murder on a video game. When you start accusing something of supporting real-life violence, you're the hysterical one. Now, there's another point I do want to bring up. Everyone keeps talking over and over again about the royalties, the royalties, JK Rowling earns money off each copy sold. Here's the thing, nobody actually knows if that's true. We don't actually know if JK Rowling was going to make any money off the game. Now you might think I sound crazy, but don't worry, I got a celebrity cameo in line for this. Here's Margot Robbie in a tight bikini doing jump rope as she explains this. Hey guys, Saul Goodman here. The almighty Loli contacted me to explain legal jargon to you knuckleheads because Margot Robbie is an evil witch that calls the police for no reason. You see, contract law, especially between international entertainment corporations, is a very complicated subject and not as easy as what smelly losers on Twitter would have you believe. To the surprise of absolutely nobody, this entire situation is far more complicated than just buy video game and bad lady gets money. There's IP ownership to consider. Now you might be asking, well, doesn't JK Rowling own the Harry Potter IP? It seems like an obvious question. She's the creator of the Harry Potter franchise to begin with. Of course, she'd retain ownership and receive royalties, correct? Well, there's actually a lot of evidence that points to her not really being involved in anything Harry Potter related that isn't the novel series. The almighty Loli was contacted by a woman known as Gamer Girl Sweat, a business analyst that had to spend a lot of time learning about IP law for her field. She knows what she's talking about and where to go to dig up this information. And she had a pretty radical theory. J.K. Rowling more than likely made minimal or outright no royalties from Hogwarts Legacy. Now you might be typing a storm away in the comments, frothing at the mouth that this is all a bunch of chicanery. And he thought the same thing at first. But as it turns out, someone that actually knows what they're doing did the one thing nobody else did in this entire controversy. She took a look. You see, there's, there's a lot of misconceptions around IP and what exactly it is. And IP, for those that don't know, stands for intellectual property. To put it simply, it's the assorted material and assets that are legally protected by a company or individual. Whether it's something physical, like a product you hold in your hand, or a copyright, which is referred to uh, as a non-physical asset. Non-physical assets cover things like copyrights, trademarks, and patents. Though that's just the simple definition. And, and while some of these might be under lock and key, the vast majority are fully available to be viewed by the public. The law firm that Warner Brothers uses to register their trademarks and copyrights even has a website where you can see everything they own, Gerben. Now, copywriting a specific asset does not mean you own an idea. You simply own the very specific version of that idea that you created. Otherwise, every zombie movie in history owes Romero a lot of money. And there's also instances where IP can change hands, such as being sold off to a different company. This is partly what caused the fiasco a few years back, where Marvel couldn't bring the X-Men into the MCU because Fox owned the rights to make the film since Marvel sold them off. An owner can sell off certain permissions to their IP to other companies. And in fact, this happens all the time. Hell, it happened with J.K. Rowling and Harry Potter. You see, the Harry Potter franchise is split across five different parties. J.K. Rowling, the creator. Warner Brothers, who own the rights to the films and other media. Scholastic Books, the U.S. publishing company Rowling used. Bloomsbury, the U.K. publishing company for her novels. And Graficica Veneta, who handles worldwide distribution of the novels otherwise. Each party gets a slice of the pie, and each one has their own contracts between each other. This isn't even considering the contracts within contracts, like how Warner Brothers worked with Electronic Arts for the early Harry Potter games. This is a long and complicated process, and obviously not a clear Scrooge McDuck situation where Rowling can swim in her Hogwarts money. She's a very wealthy woman, yes, but not because of video game sales. In fact, when you dig into who exactly owns what, you get some weird answers. JK collaborated with WB in what's known as the Wizarding World. This might imply that she gets her cut from Warner Brothers, but that's the thing. Nowhere in any of the copyrights for assorted Harry Potter material is JK named in collaboration with Warner Brothers. I'm serious. Go to tmsearch.wsp2.gov. It's the official United States trademark office. And everything Harry Potter related is listed under Warner Brothers. The movies, the theme parks, the video games, even the stage plays. And not once does it list Rowling as a co-owner in this, which for a legal document worth millions of dollars is a pretty big detail. In a licensing agreement between WB and Universal, that is public information, J.K. Rowling is listed as reserving publishing and theatrical stage rights, 
meaning anything to do with the books or plays falls under her copyright. In fact, she would have her own personal license agreement with Universal regarding sales of her books if they decided to sell them in one of their amusement parks. This isn't something that can be implied. Legal contracts are very specific and very literal. It's why lawyers make a living trying to find plot holes, because a hole in a contract could be worth tens of millions. In fact, if Universal Studios decided to have a book reading event where a narrator went through the entirety of Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone and didn't make a contract with Rowling herself to get permission for this, then they would be in violation of her copyright. There's also the merchandise. If a company sells t-shirts with Harry Potter designs on them through Walmart and Universal, they would have to pay royalties. The original producer of the merchandise is the one who foots the bill. For example, Walmart doesn't pay the royalties to sell Harry Potter Legos in their stores. Lego does. Since they are a third party desiring permission to make money off the back of a franchise they have no involvement in, beyond their triple extra large Slytherin for Life shirt. The company sells the shirts, Walmart and Universal distribute them, and the company who produced the shirts pays the royalties. But if Universal wanted to make their own shirts and sell them in their parks, despite owning the permission to make overpriced tourist traps with bad food and long lines, they would still need to pay royalties. Universal only has the license to make theme parks. They own nothing and have to pay Warner Brothers royalties for every Harry Potter branded piece of merch at their parks. It's why Harry Potter is such a big money maker. Because Universal does not own the trademark for merchandising, Warner Brothers does. These agreements cover their territory and define the relationships each company or entity has over IP. Rowling, as far as the paperwork is concerned, owns the rights to her books and stage play adaptations. Everything else purely falls under Warner Brothers an American company based out of California. Now Hogwarts Legacy was made by Avalanche Software, a game studio based out of Salt Lake City, Go Stallions, and it was the first title published under WB's new publisher company, Portkey Games. Portkey is based out of England. This might imply that Rowling is involved here, especially since this game falls under the Wizarding World, but once again, there's no smoking gun document that says Rowling makes 5% off every sale of Hogwarts Legacy, unless it's locked up in a CEO's safe somewhere. But that's just speculation at that point. Remember, legal contracts are literal, and they are specific. Now, if you look at Hogwarts Legacy's website, it'll name Rowling in their copyright message. But that's referencing the book series. Warner Brothers owns the rights to the video games. And why would they make a contract with somebody just to pay royalties to them? You see, the biggest misconception in this situation is what exactly royalties are. Everyone, even hack journalists who are supposed to be the guys who clarify this mistake, believe royalties simply equals sales. A Led Zeppelin album gets sold, so the band gets royalties. But royalties are more like a penalty for a party to use material they don't own outright. So it's more like it's more like the CD company that sells their inventory to Walmart has to pay royalties for the right to use Stairway to Heaven to make sure they don't sue you for making money off their material. Now, since the game is under the banner of Wizarding World, which is the collaboration between Rowling and Warner Brothers, you would think this means that it's said and done. But nowhere on Rowling's personal trademarks does it reference her relationship with the game. In fact, famously, there were statements from the developers insisting she had no involvement, meaning that Warner Brothers is the one getting the majority of the gold here. The more logical explanation is this. Rowling sold the rights to the video games to Warner Brothers, who paid her for permission to use her series for their own projects. Each adaptation boosts her book sales, which she does own and make money off of. And that's the secret to her wealth. Because if she made money off every single Harry Potter product sold, then she'd be richer than Bernard Arnault. Does this mean Warner Brothers can make Harry Potter games willy-nilly without paying Rowling a cent? On paper, yes. If she sold the rights to the video games to Warner Brothers, Rowling wasn't involved in development. Don't even bring the books or movies into it. If Warner Brothers trademarked the word Hogwarts for video games, then that's that. Warner Brothers is the owner. And Rowling does not make money. If Rowling gave up her rights to the video games, then she doesn't get any royalties from it. Even as the creator of Harry Potter, because she sold the rights off to another company for a cash payout. Meaning, she already got the money and rode off into the sunset. 
I remind you all of the X-Men and MCU example. Marvel created the X-Men, they are their characters, but since they sold the rights to the films to someone else, they were screwed. They owned the characters for the comic books, but they couldn't make any movies about them without specific collaborations with the actual rights owners, like Spider-Man and Sony. If Marvel still received royalties for these characters, no matter the medium they showed up in, they wouldn't have scrambled to buy out Fox or enter very intense negotiations to try and bring Spider-Man under Marvel's umbrella. But to say she gets money from each copy sold is stretching things. She sold the rights to the video games all the way back in the early 2000s. The first Harry Potter video game released as early as 2001. This is not a new deal. It's been in place for over two decades. Sure, she jokes about her royalty checks on Twitter, but if Rowling actually sat down, explained how her contracts and licensing agreements work, then she'd most likely be sued for corporate espionage. All we have to go by are public records, and the records point to Warner Brothers making money. And if we're going to hang people in the town square for buying a Harry Potter game, we'd better make damn sure we know where the money goes. Instead of just blind speculation, thank you all for listening to this long speech about copyright, and an extra thank you for Gamer Girl Sweat for doing the hard work of piecing this chimera together. She did a lot of work gathering information, checking sources, and dealing with Lolly's rampant incompetence to make sure this gets to you guys properly. So I would like you all to put a comment down thanking the based Girl Sweat for making our lives a little easier. Almighty Lolly is gonna wrap things up, so I'll let him take back over. Have a good night and kiss my ass, Walter. You ruined my life. And it really just comes down to, these are awful individuals that got drunk off the hype. They thought they were in charge. They thought they were big dick swingers that could bully people into doing whatever the hell they wanted. And then they realized, yeah, people have a limit. They have a line. That's why they're trying so hard to make this about identity politics, because it's their ultimate scapegoat. If they can somehow spin this to where the people getting outraged at the mob that was going after people are somehow more cringe than they are, then all this will go away. Ignoring the fact that they've been calling people literal murderers for wanting to play a fucking Harry Potter game, including trying to tie it to a real-life murder where someone was stabbed in a park in the UK with no evidence whatsoever pointing to it being a hate crime, and especially not involved with Harry Potter. They're doing everything they can except admit that they fucked up. Not one person has come out and admitted, yeah, this went too far, I got too heated, I'm sorry. Nobody has ever done that. They've denied involvement, they've downplayed it, They've claimed that, oh, it was all made up, or, worst of all, they acted like they were never involved in, oh, maybe we should just let people play the fucking video game. No acknowledgement whatsoever that all of this was a tantrum over a wizard game for children. No, there was never a real-life genocide that was going to be caused by goddamn Hogwarts Legacy. The fact that that is a controversial statement disgusts me in ways you cannot imagine. People will unironically try to convince you that buying a fucking Harry Potter game will somehow fund death squads that will put bullets in people. No, it's blatant moral policing. It is outrage marketing, it's fear tactics, it is all the classic bullshit you see from scumbags that have exploited people's fears since fucking cave paintings. They're not special. This situation is not special. Take a step outside and feel the goddamn sun. And even if you want to say that the people getting upset about all this are going too far, I'll simply ask this. What the fuck did you think was gonna happen? What did you think was gonna happen? Are you just a fucking idiot? Do you just not think? When streamers were getting brigaded, people were having to outright address that they couldn't stream Hogwarts because they were scared of getting doxxed, with all this fear-mongery bullshit. What the fuck did you think the snapback was gonna be? Did you really think they would just quiet down and be like, well, I don't want to be like you, so I'll just let it go? No. You were going to egg on people that will look for any excuse to fuck you up. And now it's happening. So, you reap what you sow. All you had to do was not make Harry Potter into a battlefield. And yeah, frankly, I don't really care. The same crowd that bitch endlessly about online harassment and bullying engaged in it shamelessly as soon as they felt morally secure. Sure, they prated it up, saying, oh, I'm just expressing my disappointment, or, oh, don't you understand the harm you're, you're causing trans people? Prettying up language that's actually pretty venomous and insidious. Once again, the people I listed in the video are just a few examples. There are so many more, and they should not be forgotten. Never forget what these assholes excuse when they feel like they reach the top of the ladder, especially if they whine about online harassment before before or after. Nobody really believes in treating people well. It's all what gets them money and clout in the moment. The entire situation is just... fucking gross. If this is the shit that progressive thinking gets, then eat my fucking ass. It's fraudulent and should be mocked for the scam it is. Think for yourselves and tell these moral busybodies to fuck off. 
When I was a kid, Jack Thompson was the big boogeyman, the douchebag that wanted to ruin the gaming industry out of a sense of moral superiority. Cut to today, his line of thinking couldn't be more popular. Fuck you all. You're all frauds. Uh, Almighty Lowly would like to thank Weekend Warrior for his cameo on this project. He does movie reviews that are pretty fun. He's a cool guy. Go fuck yourself, Walter. Hey, loser. Do you want a shirt? Do you want a t-shirt? I have shirts now. Look in, look in the description for a link to a t-shirt you can buy. If you don't buy the t-shirt, I'll kill your family. If you don't buy the t-shirt, I'll poison your dog. If you don't buy the t-shirt, you're going to be the only person in town that does not have a t-shirt. Everyone's going to look at you funny. There's going to be social consequences to not having one of these t-shirts. I'm now making express threats of violence against you if you do not buy my t-shirt. I will call the police, tell them how they're not, you know, you're not buying my shirt. They're going to plant crack in your house, and they're going to arrest you and then beat you up in a jail cell. Buy my shirt.